Hello, we had a really nice day here today, so I thought rather than waste it by not doing any flying, I would do a comparison between these two planes here to see which is the more efficient. So I tried to do it as scientifically as I could in that I used the same, that's a 4S 8 amp hour battery there. I used the same battery for both tests and I made the test to basically just do a big figure eight over the uh, countryside out there. Uh, because I wanted to include as much as possible of level flying uh, instead of just doing a loiter where you're in a bank all the time and when you're in a bank you're not you know quite getting as much lift as you would if you're flying level um, so there are some other differences between these though I'll list up the specs of these as far as motor and prop goes um, on the screen actually I'll just tell you what they are I think that is a 35 36 900 and something kV motor with a 10 by 6 prop over here we have, I think it's a 700 kV motor with a 12 by 6 uh, folding prop on that one. And I guess the only other main difference that I should have considered is that that VTX is 200 milliwatt and this VTX is 600 milliwatt. So um, yeah, that would have been using a little bit more power there. Neither of them are carrying an HD camera, but they are both carrying one of these FPV cameras like that being powered from the main battery. I think that's about it for the physical differences. As far as the software and uh, firmware goes, this one's running an Omnibus F4, uh, running Pilot, fairly new version, that's a development version still at the moment. That's the one that has the OSD support in it. Um, and this one's the Radiolink Mini Picks under there, slightly older version. And this plane here seems to be tuned a lot better because it holds its altitude much more stable it's more stable in general, I think, because it's a bit heavier, but um, this one, I'm not sure if it's to do with this airframe or, or what, but it has a lot of trouble just keeping it one constant altitude, and I noticed this when I was flying it manually as well. It just sort of wants to gradually go up, and then you tip it down, and then it wants to gradually go down, and it just doesn't want to stay at one altitude, so um, I think, yeah, the autopilot was having a bit of trouble with that too, it was going up and down, and you could hear the throttle oscillating gradually every now and then as well, so... That probably was not ideal, could use a bit more tuning, although I did spend about an hour trying to get rid of it the other day, so I'm not sure if it can be tuned out. How do we define efficiency uh, is an important question. You could consider it to be total time in the air per milliamp hour, um, but you could also, or you should also consider that this plane is a lot faster, so you could maybe, or you should maybe also consider distance covered per milliamp hour. So I'll leave it to you to decide what you consider efficient to be, but um, I haven't looked at the results in detail, but um, the way that I did this test was to, in each case, I let the battery run down to just under 15 volts as displayed by the OSD. So the OSDs are slightly different. This one's using a multi-wee OSD, or what do you call it, MW OSD. This one was using the um, Pilot onboard all-in-one OSD. So the voltage readouts are slightly different. But in each case, I made it to go until it was just sort of dipping under 15 volts. Both planes are capable of flying for 30 minutes before the voltage goes down below 15 volts. Um, so I thought that was long enough. And also because I wanted to charge the battery between the tests, uh, it would have taken much longer if I had have let the battery go all the way down to uh, approaching a dangerous sort of level to get a really a full battery number. But um, I've been bitten by these multi-star packs couple of times in the last few weeks they don't like being discharged too low it seems like when they start to get low one of the cells gets way ahead of the others getting low and you end up with three cells that are still fairly well charged and one cell that just dies completely so I didn't want that to be happening again uh, so that's the reason why I only went to 15 volts for this test now of course the flight footage is not very exciting to look at so let's just jump straight to the results. This is the cell voltages of the Mini Talon battery after it was finished and charging that back up uh, put 4.09 amp hours in and for the Buffalo, that's a bit small isn't it, slightly more left so this means that the OSD display for the voltage that I was using to decide when to stop was a little bit different that's all and that charged back up to 3.73 amp hours so that's why we can't just really use the voltage as a measurement um, you kind of need to look at the amp hours that were replaced when you charged it to get a better measurement um, 
So these are the stats. Uh, let's see, flight time 42 minutes versus 40 minutes for the Buffalo. Uh, the biggest difference was the distance covered, I think. So 42 kilometers covered by the Mini Talon and not even 30 by the Buffalo. So average speeds are about that. Uh, this is what we just saw. So then when you take these numbers and do some sort of little uh, math with them, the time per amp hour is about 10 minutes for both of them, time in the air. Uh, but the distance is quite different because Mini Talon was a lot faster. So the uh, Buffalo distance per amp hour is only about 80% of as far as the Mini Talon was able to travel. Um, but that's not the total story because if you also want to consider how much weight was being held up in the air for that time then you can also do this one so this is just the weight multiplied by the time so this is a funny number kilogram minutes I guess you would call it and if you then consider that per amp hour used you get this number here 16.8 for the mini talon and 24 for the buffalo so this is <laughs> the strange unit again kilogram minutes per amp hour um, and this is sort of a measure of how much weight it can hold up in the air for how long for how many amp hours um, so weight lifting capacity per amp hour higher being better of course uh, and this is a fairly different number obviously the buffalo is much better at lifting uh, more weight with the larger wing area and so on uh, but then if you also consider how far that weight was carried and you're more interested in you know carrying a weight a distance you don't care how long it was in the air for uh, you might try weight multiplied by distance to get kilogram kilometers um, so this is you could consider this uh, carrying 65 kilograms one kilometer well that's not really a plane couldn't do that so maybe a more realistic way to think of this is carrying one kilogram 65 kilometers uh, in each case and they're about the same here actually and then if you then uh, divide that by the number of amp hours that it was re required to carry that weight that distance you end up with this number and this is interestingly it's about the same in each case so there's not much difference in it here uh, so if you wanted to use one of these as a delivery drone or something um, the weight per distance per amp hour is quite quite similar but of course the mini talon will get there much quicker um, so yeah that's about it I mean you could do some other calculations with these numbers I suppose one thing that's not mentioned in here that I didn't point out adding a little bit more weight to each of these planes will have much more effect for the mini talon um, whereas if you add weight you can keep adding quite a bit more at weight to the buffalo before you'll notice any significant change in performance so that's one of the things that you could probably keep in mind as well when you're looking at this kind of efficiency um, yeah so that's that's the end of this video pretty short video nothing surprising really it's pretty much what I expected the Buffalo is much more stable and able to lift more weight and is much better as a aerial mapping platform and the mini Talon is much better for just zooming around and having fun um, I found that the Buffalo is a little bit boring for flying around FPV actually that's why I've been flying I set up the RJ pilot in my mini Talon and I've been flying that FPV a little bit more often lately anyway Thanks for watching. Hope it was interesting. See ya.